project 12-5 goes over setting up remote administration using Telnet. Now Telnet is an old protocol, it's unsecure and nobody uses it. So really you should not set this up on a production system, but setting up a remote administration daemon and getting it working is good practice at the command line nonetheless. Log into your Ubuntu server first and we're going to install a couple of packages xinetd and telnetd so use apt-get from the command line space install xinetd space telnetd so that'll install these two programs Once they are installed, we'll need to create a configuration file and tell xinetd to start up the Telnet service. So this is all done manually, uh, especially in the Ubuntu and a lot of distros because Telnet, like I said, is so old, you have to go manually set it up. So let's create a file using the VI editor under the Etsy folder, xinetd.d forward slash, and this file is not created yet, so we'll have to type in telnet and hit enter. You have to make sure the spelling is correct. And then I'll hit I for insert. And we'll do the service space telnet. Open up the curly bracket. Disable. And I like to tab over at least twice and put equal and no. That way all of my values are going to be lined up with each other. So flags equals reuse. If you miss a space um, with an equal mark, Telnet will not start. So you see I have a space after the equal. I also have either a space or a tab before the equal mark. If you're looking in the directions, uh, I don't have anything tabbed over, but there is a space before and after the equal mark. Okay, I'm finishing typing everything up. You should not see any gray text. It should be all colorized. I'm going to go ahead and make a mistake on purpose inside of here. Instead of user ID, I'm going to just do user ED. Notice it's gray, so that is a mistake. I'm going to close out the bracket, and you should not make the mistake. I'm going to show you some troubleshooting techniques if you happen to mess something up in here. The biggest thing is to make sure there are spaces around the equal marks. Now the plus equal is together, but there is a space before the plus. There is a space after the equal on that last line. And don't forget to close the curly bracket. So I'm going to write and quit. And it tells us to do a service xinetd restart. So that is the parent service that runs other processes, um, daemons like Telnet. So we restarted it, and if I try to do a telnet localhost, you'll notice I get a connection refused. So telnet did not start properly. So one of two things could happen. Either I didn't install telnet with the app get command, or telnet is having an issue. To troubleshoot, I can use grep, the word telnet, and I can look under var log forward slash star. So all of the logs underneath var log look inside of them for the word telnet. I'll hit enter and reading right here I can see at the bottom some of the bottom lines here says error parsing attribute log on failure and it's disabling the service. So I know that I have an issue with that telnet file that I just created 
at the log on failure line. So I'm going to hit my up arrow key until I get back to the VI and edit the telnet. And again, I come in here and I see, so there's a problem with log on failure. I go down here and double check and compare this with what is in the lab. And I see that I mistyped and also see that it's gray. So user should be user ID. Now it's colorized and fixed. If you forget a space around one of these equal marks, you likely will not get an error. But Telnet will still not work, so you have to double check that too. So I'm going to hit Escape, colon WQ, and then I'm going to do a service X INET D restart again. Now if I Telnet localhost, it'll come up and ask me for a username. And then we'll log in as user1, secret. I can type in who and have a pseudo terminal because I'm logging in remotely into the system as the user one account. Of course it is, I'm on the system, it's going through a local loopback and it says local there. This program thinks I'm coming in as you know, across the network. Now it wants me to exit. And before I go any further, I'm going to record down the IP address of the Ubuntu system. So I'm going to do ifconfig, or I could do IP AD, ADDR list and get the IP address. Since we switched from NAT to bridged, your IP address is going to be different. So you'll want to open up a notepad window in Microsoft Windows. And I'm going to put down here... Ubuntu, and I'm going to put the IP address of my Ether0. We will need that later on in this lab, and in the next lab, and in the next lab. So 147.97.20.15 is mine. Yours will be a, most likely, I said, a 192 number. I also need to get the sent OS address in a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this notepad for now. And then we have near step uh, number eight. We try to log in as root, it will fail. So we'll turn at localhost, we'll try to log in as root, wait a little while, we'll get an error, and it'll bring me into another login prompt. I use my left control on the keyboard and tap C, and it gets me back to the command prompt. They want us to move security into backup, which is not a good thing. Root should not be able to log in to Telnet. So that's renaming the security file to dot backup. So next time we try to log in as root, it'll give us a password prompt and we can log in as root. So very, very horrible, horrible security at that. Don't ever implement Telnet don't ever allow root to log on remotely. Okay, I'm going to exit back out like it says. I'm back at the command prompt. And now it wants us to download a program called PuTTY off of the internet. So I'm going to minimize all of my VirtualBox stuff. And I'll bring up a web browser. So here I have Google Chrome. I'll just search for Putty instead of typing in that big long address, or you can also click on the link and it should take you to the to the download page without having to even search for it. You're going to download putty.exe and we're going to run it. In, it'll probably be in your downloads folder where you put it on your desktop. So putty comes up, I'll minimize my web browser, and now once it's put in the IP address, we recorded down in Notepad. So I'll bring up Notepad, bring up the PuTTY window. Notice it's automatically set at SSH logon. So we need to change that to Telnet. We'll change the port number to 23, switch to Telnet, which is a server that we set up. Punch in the IP address. So that's the one you recorded down from Ubuntu and click Open. So from Windows, you can log in and manage your Ubuntu server. 
of course you would want to use SSH which would be a secure login and have everything encrypted but this is still a good uh, good setup playing with daemons getting them started and using putty to log in it'll look the same way uh, if you were to SSH into the system same type of text we'd just be secure nobody could steal our password so now we need to exit out and we're going to jump over to sent OS so I'm going to log in. I'm going to do mine through the graphical interface. And I've already, from previous lab, logged in as root. Did an SU minus. There's my pound sign. So logged in as CentOS. We need to install the Telnet server. Instead of apt-get, we do yum. Install. So pretty much the same syntax. I'm going to install Telnet-server and the Telnet program. CentOS doesn't even come with the Telnet program because it's so insecure. So Telnet being the client, what you can use to connect some, to somebody else on. So do we want to install all of this? Yes. Now they want us to Telnet into the Ubuntu system. So Telnet The IP address you recorded down, mine was 20.15. So hit enter. We can log in as, what did it say, root. And pass 1234. Type in who. You see we're logged in at root as a pseudo terminal. And it gives me the IP address of my sent OS. I should probably record that now because they will likely want us to log in from Ubuntu to CentOS. So 147. Again, yours will be 192 most likely. So I record that down for my CentOS. It's telling me that, hey, this is my remote site. This is my Cent that I've logged into. Remotely into Ubuntu. I see my Ubuntu name down there. So we'll need that in a little bit. Okay, now they want us to exit back out and make sure that we're back server one, we're back into our CentOS. I want CentOS to start the uh, Telnet server. So system control, start, Telnet, socket. They were a little bit easier on us. We didn't have to write a configuration file. Uh, it auto had the configuration file, so all we had to do was type start to bring up Telnet. Uh, doing the same thing, we have the same security file in CentOS as Ubuntu. That prevents root from logging in. So we're just going to move that file out of the way. Uh, so now there's no security file to check. Telnet local host. A few moments, it'll give you the login. Try to log in as root. It should succeed since we went ahead and moved that security file out of the way first. Now they want us to exit back out. Although we logged into ourself, we could have done the next command um, as Telnet it in. This right here is going to open up a firewall because CentOS is going to have the Telnet service blocked by default. So firewall command add service Telnet. So that's going to open up a hole in the firewall say let that protocol through. Now we didn't add a dash dash permanent tag to this. So if we reboot our CentOS system, that firewall um, addition should be removed. So if you reboot, uh, you won't be able to log back into the system. So now I want to exit and log out of the shell. I'm actually just going to keep that up and just minimize it. And I want us to run PuTTY again. So my PuTTY was under downloads. Here's all of y'all's projects that I've been grading. 
So there's the putty command. Bring it back up, and I'm going to put the IP address that I recorded down for sent OS. You could also type ifconfig in sent OS if you didn't get it, and I need to change it to telnet. So make sure that change is made, and click open. So here's the 3.10 kernel for CentOS 7. Login as root. Pass 1234. I missed a letter. So now I've got logged into CentOS, and I see server 1 down there, so I know that I'm logged into that one instead of Ubuntu. You type in who. See that I'm in as a pseudo terminal and also user one. I got that terminal window open in the graphical desktop. So that's also known as a pseudo terminal. It's not at one of those like Control Alt F2 or Control Alt F3 screens. So I don't see TTY there. So at this point, they want us to exit out and close the PuTTY program. So that's all for 12 5. Again, on a production system, do not set up Telnet. Don't use it. Should never be installed.